This video is sponsored by PageProof. Hi everyone, this is Teresa Jackson for Creative Pro. I've got a sneak peek here of a session I'll be giving at Creative Pro Week 2023. It's about working together with Photoshop and Illustrator. Collaboration between Photoshop and Illustrator often takes place by way of Creative Cloud libraries, and I love libraries. However, sometimes libraries can be a curse. They can be both a blessing and a curse. So in this tip, I'm going to first show you when and why using a library could trip you up. Then I'll show you a perfect use case for when libraries are awesome. We're starting here in Illustrator and I have some stock graphics open. I wanna take this butterfly that I've selected and put it into a Photoshop document. So I'll copy it to my clipboard and I'll switch over to Photoshop and then I'll paste it into Photoshop. And this brings up a dialog with several options. In this scenario, we're going to choose Smart Object. It's what I use most often. But be careful when you do this because you might have Add to My Current Library checked. I don't like to have this on. Let me show you what happens when you do have this checked. I'll go ahead and say OK. And let's go ahead and scale this up so that we can see it nice and big. This is really the beauty of pasting an Illustrator vector graphic into Photoshop is it stays nice and sharp. As you scale it up and down, it's always going to remain sharp. So we'll commit that. And then look over here at the library that I have open. That graphic of the butterfly is in the library. It's not in the document, the Photoshop document itself. It's actually in the library. If we look at the layers panel, we'll see the cloud icon. That's our clue that this graphic is not inside of the Photoshop document. It's inside of a library. So if I double click on that, it opens the graphic and we could change it here. We can edit it. But also notice the name of this up here. This is a separate instance of this Illustrator graphic than the original graphic that we copied it from because this is what lives inside of the library. I'll go ahead and select the orange color here and just change this to something noticeably different. Make it darker, I'll close it, save it, and switch back to Photoshop, we see that the color has been updated here and it's also been updated in the library. Why is this a problem? Well, this is a problem for several reasons that I can think of. First and foremost, if you share your documents, your Photoshop documents with other people, then they're not going to have access to this graphic when they open the Photoshop document. They're gonna get a question mark up here on the cloud icon. Also, if your libraries are non-permanent, for example, I create a lot of libraries for presentations and then after a while I delete them. Well, if I have a Photoshop document with a graphic in one of those libraries, it's gone after I delete the library. Another reason for avoiding putting graphics in a Creative Cloud library is that if you're a student using a school account, it's only going to work while you have access to that school account. Later on, after you've finished school and you want to open that Photoshop document, you're not going to have access to that graphic anymore. So instead of this, I always embed it in the document. We'll just go ahead and do a paste again. Turn this off. Say OK. We'll scale this up so that we can see this is the original color. And I'll turn this layer off. Notice the difference. This icon shows that it's embedded in the document. It's not embedded in a Creative Cloud library, and it didn't show up here in the library. Okay, now I promised I would show you a scenario where libraries are awesome, and that is when you're working with colors. I'd like to take the colors from this butterfly and create swatches for them so that I can use them in Photoshop. Now, Photoshop has a swatches panel and it has swatches, but it isn't nearly as robust as Illustrator is. So we're going to use Illustrator for this. I'll switch back to Illustrator. With the graphic selected, click on the folder icon here to create a new color group. We can call this butterfly. And I want to convert these to um, colors from process to global, always do that. We'll say okay, and now we have a set of four colors. 
If I select the set, down here at the bottom of the swatches panel is the icon to add it to a library. Clicking on this adds those as a group in the library panel. Now I'll switch back to Photoshop and all those colors are here. If I want to start painting in Photoshop and switch to my brush here, I can just click on one of these colors to set my foreground color or we can select the orange color here, paint with that. And what's nice about having these colors in the library is that if this isn't visible or maybe it's not even the same document I'm working in, I still have access to those brand colors within the library, both in Photoshop and back here in Illustrator. The same colors exist. Thanks for watching this sneak peek of my session for Creative Pro Week 2023. I've got a lot more Photoshop and Illustrator workflow tips that I'll be sharing at the conference. I hope to see you there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And for thousands more how-to articles and tutorials, visit our website, creativepro.com, and become a member today. Thanks for learning with us.